What is up everybody, Terry here, and today we're gonna go over how to do a pressure leak test on your cooling system on your BMW. Now if you have a late model, like BMW that's a three series, or in my case a Z3, then this is gonna be the video for you. So I've been going ahead and doing a full cooling system rebuild on my 2001 BMW Z3 and we finally got all the parts in so now it's time to do that pressure test so I can make sure all of the hoses and pipes and everything that I put in are properly secured before I put the intake manifold back on. Here you can see we got a brand new radiator put in, we got some new hoses, we got a new thermostat, I replaced the water pipe as well as this cooling pipe here, put a brand new reservoir in, all these hoses down here, the ones that go to the heater valves, well down to the heater core, all have been replaced. So let's go ahead and make sure everything is tight. But before we do that, let me show you what we're going to use. Now I went online and I spent at least one to two weeks researching different cooling system pressure kits to try to find something that's going to work for my needs without being overkill because I am not a professional shop by any means. I'm not going to have uh, anything that's going to be, I don't need a kit that's going to accommodate a multitude of makes and models of vehicles coming in. I just need something that's going to work for what I have. So that being said, I had a look at, first off, what's all going to be in the kit? Is it going to have an adapter for BMW? Is and, and on top of being BMW, it has to be something that will work for the older BMWs. So that was the first thing I had to look for. The next thing was that I was particular about is I didn't want the kit to be too large. I don't have a lot of storage space, so I can't have a really big giant kit taking up space, especially when most of the stuff in those kits I wouldn't be using anyway. Uh, another factor that I looked at was the actual pressure gauges that came on the pumps. Uh, some of them are not as intuitive as others, so I was looking at the design of the actual gauges for the readings, and I wanted to find something that had the right kind of measurements that I was looking for as well was easy enough to read so that was a factor for me that may not necessarily be a factor for you also I didn't want a very cheap flimsy plastic pump and I've looked at kits as cheap as forty dollars all the way up to kits that are in the 200 price range and even the two hundred dollar kits oftentimes had cheap plastic pumps and I looked at reviews, and people were not pleased with these pumps. They would leak pressure. What the, the hoses would leak pressure. The pumps would break. And I didn't want to deal with that. So, like, so that really makes me worried for people who are thinking that if they spend more money, they're going to get a better quality product. And that is not the case when it comes to these cooling uh, system pressure kits. So buyer beware for sure. Make sure you do your due diligence before you buy a kit. Now... Amazon is going to have a lot of cheap uh, Chinese made kits. Uh, most of them are the exact same kit. They're just rebranded by different names, but they're sold by the exact same vendor. They're just using different fake accounts, I guess, to, to kind of, you know, churn out to get more sales. I don't really know what they're doing, but they're all the exact same kit. Uh, the only difference is, is you might get a red box or a black box, <laughs> but that's about it. So, you know, make sure you do, do, like I said, due diligence on what you're getting because a lot of these are going to have cheap plastic parts. Now, you're probably wondering, what one did I go with? So let me show you what I picked out. Now, I went ahead and went with OEM Tools. They had this nice little universal test kit that it was working for my needs. It's nice and small and compact. If you look at it from the size of my hand, uh, you know, this is like, just like your average little small toolbox. This is kind of what I wanted. I didn't want a, an enormous kit. Uh, taking up space. So this is the perfect size for storage that I wanted. This is their 27068 model number and it comes with a very nice case. I'm quite pleased with the case and if you go ahead and you open this up. Now this, I'll talk about that in a moment, that did not come with the kit. So this here is what you get inside the kit. Now this is a universal adapter. It's going to give you course your pump this is made with metal not cheap plastic uh, which is important for me uh, as well as it got some different fittings here depending on which car you have this is going to help with a lot of different makes and models of vehicles without having to have 20 
plus adapters um, in a kit, so that was very, very nice. And so whether you go and go directly onto your radiator or if you have a coolant reservoir, you'll have, uh, you can put this right on here and you'll have your different adapters to fit your reservoirs. Very, very nice kit. I had also mentioned that the layout of the gauge was important to me personally, and this one was a very easy to read gauge. It clearly, this one's PSI only. Some, of, some that you will find will have both PSI as well as bar, which would be a handy. I would have liked they had bar on this one, but this one didn't offer that option. But I do like how everything is color coordinated, and you can clearly tell where you need to be. So this, is, this one works fine uh, for my needs. Very nice kit. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put the link to this kit in my description. So if anyone is interested in getting this kit, you can do so. Now, I was unsure if these universal pieces would fit on my BMW. So OEM Tools also sells an adapter. This is their 27250R adapter. This one is specifically for late model BMWs. So if you have a 3 Series or a Z3, this one is specifically for those vehicles. So I went ahead and I bought this. I think it was like a $50 adapter. So, you know, it is what it is. All in, I'm probably about a hundred and, I don't know, maybe like $160, $180 all in. I haven't looked at my prices in a while to remember what I paid. But you could go $200 and get a complete professional kit. But like I said, uh, those could still be quite faulty with cheap plastic parts. I did rent one of those kits from my local parts store, and the pump was broken. So that led me to buying my own. Now, the nice thing about this, even though this was sold separately, there is actually a spot here where you can fit one additional adapter. So if you have a Volkswagen, or because they do offer a couple other adapters that are sold separately, if you do need one of those ones, you do have a spot for one additional adapter. And it does fit right there. It's a little bit tight. You can see it's made some indentation in the foam here. But I am still able to add that adapter. And I can still close my box quite easily. It's not bulging out or anything like that to where it's going to break. And it works out just fine. So I'm pleased with that. So that's what I went with. Now in terms of some issues that I had spotted right out of the jump. Now this adapter that I bought separately here. It comes with this rubber seal that goes on the inside here. And this is the part that would connect to the pump. This rubber insert, I noticed that the camera will focus on here for you. Let me try to get a better focus here. All right, I'm trying to adjust the camera. OK, so not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but it looks like someone actually cut this with a knife. You see that? That's the way it came from me from the manufacturer when I ordered this uh, this kit. So that's a little concerning, but uh, I can, I'm hoping that won't cause any sort of issues with holding pressure. But yeah, that is a flaw of the one that I got. Um, another thing with this adapter that I bought, uh, I had cleaned it up with some goo gone, but they have some sort of like glue or sealant that goes all the way around here, and it started to pull down the side. And it was very, very tacky and uh, not pleasant. So I went and took some goo gone and I cleaned it off. But yeah. So even though these are very good quality, like there's a lot of weight to it. I can tell it's not made out of flimsy parts. There is still some lack of quality control at OEM uh, tools because they didn't make sure the stuff was dry. You can still see some of it still kind of sitting there. Yeah, I didn't get it all off. Uh, to make sure they didn't have their glue leaking all over their products. That same tacky adhesive was also found on my pump. And like I said, these were purchased separately. So it wasn't an, an instance of, well, maybe someone had bought it and returned it and they got it dirty. This was bought separately and it had the same adhesive on my pump and I had to wash it off. So, yeah, that's definitely an issue with the manufacturer making sure... They're not checking to make sure their adhesives that they're using are, are dry. And so they're dripping onto different things that they're packaging up, and they're not cleaning it. Because I feel like, how are you packaging this and not noticing that you have adhesive on your stuff? 
So that's an oversight on their part, but again, it's not a deal breaker because I, can, I was able to clean it off, no issue, with some goo gone, but still, it's one of those things. It's like, are you really? Now that we've gone over what we're going to be doing today, as well as which kit I'm going to be using, let's go ahead and go over the process for any of you who may have never done this before. Now, ideally, you would want to be able to have the ability at some point to start the car, uh, but we won't be doing that today as my intake manifold is not on there, so we're going to be doing this without the ability to do a cold pressure test and then do a hot one, or not a hot one, but like a semi-warm one. Uh, the reason being that you'd want to do a semi-warm one is, well, first you always do a cold test first because it's going to be under pressure and things are going to get hot and it's dangerous to try to do a test when your engine's warm. Uh, so you'd want to make sure everything is cold to begin the test and then while you're ready or under the, the test has already been initiated, you could start the car, let it get a little warm and shut it off. That way the heat will start to make your hoses and stuff expand like they would during normal use. And that would also show any leaks that would only happen once there's expansion happening. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that <laughs> because it's not safe to start the car in its current uh, state. So we will just be doing the standard cold test. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to put some distilled water in my system. Um, I do not, if there are leaks, because I replaced every single hose that is involved in my cooling system, if something's not tight, I don't want um, expensive coolant spilling all over the place. I would rather just have water uh, for the test, and then I can drain it and put actual coolant in the system when I'm ready to do the bleed. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and put some water in it. I got one of these funnel kits from EP Auto. There's a bunch of different manufacturers that sell similar kits. I do like this one, and it's from the same company that I have my... Uh, socket kits from my uh, hex bit and my torx bit uh, socket kits from are from EP Auto so I got their funnel uh, this is just going to make it a little easier to, to get stuff in without spilling it everywhere especially some uh, I have pretty big jugs <laughs> so let's go ahead and get some water in the system and uh, we'll start pressurizing all right so go ahead and we'll remove the reservoir cap and there are different adapters and things that come with this funnel You just kind of find the ones that go to your car and put it all together. That'll stick in and then tighten it down. Good and tight so we don't have water leaking everywhere if we can help it. Now I'm not going to be able to properly, like I won't be able to fully fill the cooling system with water. Seeing as how I know there's no way for me to bleed it in. And get it to pump through. Now, keep in mind this is distilled water. If you're doing your tests with water, you want to make sure you're not doing it when it's cold, to where you have a potential for it freezing. So, make sure it's warm enough to be doing it with water. Now, my microphone wasn't turned on, but what happened here is as I was putting in the second gallon of water, I could hear, hear water leaking, so I went to investigate, and as you can see here in the video, it was leaking from the thermostat into the lower radiator hose that I make shifted together. The upper radiator hose that I had wasn't leaking, but that lower one that I put together was not working out, so I have to come up with a different solution because where I put the pipes together, it was leaking and it was even leaking where it was clamped. So the clamps weren't working either. All right, my friends, I went ahead and I bought a replacement lower radiator hose and I did what I should have did in the very beginning is I bought another continental flexible hose, just like I got for the upper. I got a shorter one. The one I got is the 52417 uh, and it, you know, it's a tight fit, but it it fits. I have the OEM clamps on here at the moment because I just wanted to make sure it fits before I put my good ones on because these are a little bit harder to get on. Uh, but the hose does connect, and it does sit up high enough to where it doesn't make contact with my pulley and my AC belt. So 
new belt on there. So we're going to go ahead and put the water in and try to see if the pressure test and the leak test uh, succeeds. I did have to go and drain all of the water out of the system. Uh, the temperatures did drop uh, in the low 30 degree Fahrenheit range. So I had to drain the water out so that way nothing would freeze. But it's another hot, like 78 degree day today. So we're going to put water back in. And we're going to try this again. So let's get it. I'm just going to slowly put a gallon of distilled water in. And then as I pour it, I'm listening for leaks. And I'm not hearing anything this time. I could hear it leaking from the front last time. That's why I stopped putting water in. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. So we should be good to go here. All right, now we got one gallon of distilled water in here. Now that's by no means fills the system, but it'll be enough to do the pressure test. Uh, and everything is looking dry. I don't see any water leaking initially, so that's good. Everything here is good, nothing leaking down here. And my nemesis, the lower radiator hose, is also not leaking. So we're already ahead of the game now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the pressure test kit hooked up, and uh, we'll go from there. So I went ahead and I put the BMW adapter on there and now we'll attach the actual part for the pump. Whoops, try not to break anything here. Let's see how this goes on. Not quite sure how this attaches. It looks like it would stick out too far. All right, so I'm finding that if I keep the rubber piece inside here this doesn't want to go on so i'm going to try attaching it without it does have a rubber end on this end so i may not need that piece i'm going to find out but uh let's try this again so there's these little grooves on top here on the ends that are going to slide through right through here I gotta try to get this to slop, slip on. All right, so I ran, into, I ran into some hiccups. I put two gallons of distilled water into my uh, system, so we're good there, but my pressure test, it was not properly lock on to the adapter, and so I wasn't able to build up pressure on the kit. It was just leaking air. So I went to AutoZone and I rented their kit so we're going to try this to see if we can't get a positive reading and show that we are holding pressure so I can officially start putting my intake manifold back together. This is how the kit looks. It comes with 22 different pieces. All I need is the pump and then one of the adapters. I'm guessing it's either number 5 or number 21. It's going to be one of these probably, or it might be this one. It might be this one. I have to look in the, in the book to see which one is for the BMW, but it's going to be one of these. Uh, let me find the correct one, and uh, let's try to get this going. All right, and I needed the number five adapter. This is the one that fits on to the reservoir. Now, it's harder to see on this gauge, but what you want is 1.5 bars, which is easy to read on this gauge, or you want around 22 PSI, which is harder to read on this one, but we can go by the bar 1.5 and that'll be in the same ballpark of what we want. And then we just start pumping it until we get the pressure we need it to be. It's getting harder to pump it. All right, and there we have it. We're losing pressure, so we definitely have a leak. All right, the leak is coming from the upper radiator hose. And the 
blower. These are both leaking. Seems no matter what I do, I can't get any hoses to work on this thermostat without constantly getting leaks. I've had, I put two clamps on here because I was having air uh, leaking out of here and I'm still getting leaks here. They really make it to where they want you to use those quick disconnect hoses, but unfortunately they just do not work on here. I'm starting to run out of options. I really need to get my car up and running because it's getting colder and colder and I am not going to want to be dealing with this when the temperatures get too cold because I don't want to deal with water and things freezing up inside the engine. I might just need to bite the bullet and buy the OEM thermostat so I can use the original hoses that lock on put into place because I've bought five different hoses and no matter what I do I just keep leaking okay my friends so I went ahead and I swapped out the thermostat and I went back to the OEM style hoses and I finally got that stuff attached so for reference I went with the Molly uh, thermostat uh, I'll post the information for it and then I got some rain hoses got this one for the upper radiator hose and then this one for the lower radiator hose and I will let you know even with a different thermostat I ran into the exact same issue with the lower radiator hose not wanting to connect. Uh, I had to have my husband put all of his might to get this to lock in because yeah he even admitted that it was way too difficult to get on. This one clicked in no problem but yeah the lower radiator hose just for whatever reason the fitment is just rough and it's just it doesn't like to go together but we got this together so now once again Let's try to do our pressure test and see if everything holds. I have about two gallons of distilled water in the system. The system will take close to three gallons, but there's no way to get three gallons in without running the car to bleed your system so this is the best I can do if you look at the gauge here we're at 1.5 bar which is about 21.8 or 22 psi it's holding steady at the moment and I didn't hear any leaks we have no leaks coming from the thermostat this time around so now you just gotta wait two minutes to see if we have droppage. Uh, a little bit of drop means you have a tiny leak somewhere. If it drops a lot, then you have a major leak. So that's usually going to mean spillage somewhere. Um, if you have a little bit of a drop, but you don't have any water leaking anywhere, you might have a little bit of an air leak somewhere. Or, worst case, you might have an internal leak. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let this sit for a few minutes and we'll come back and see if we lost pressure. So while we let the pressure test sit for a little bit, I want to point something out. So this was that SKP aluminum thermostat I put on. There's the uh, part number on there. I installed this to the car one month ago. I have never put coolant in the car since I put this on. Never ran the car anything, intake manifold still not installed as you can see the intake manifolds so I all I did was I put this on and I spent a whole month fighting with it trying to get hoses to go on here because the quick disconnect hoses would not lock on to this thermostat the measurements must be off so I was not pleased with that so and then the only thing I ever put in this system was distilled water on occasion to try to do leak tests and then I've had every, and then every single time I wasn't able to do it, I always drained the water out so that way while the car sat for a week, I wouldn't have any water just sitting in the system. And in that time, 
there's already some sort of deposits that are forming inside here. And it was uh, even starting to get, I don't know if I can see it anymore, but it was starting to get like this weird brown kind of like uh, rust colored like gel kind of forming on here. So I don't know if it's just gunk that's left over in the system that still needs to get flushed out or if this was causing some sort of reaction with the aluminum to where it was creating stuff. Because you can even tell that this is starting to have some discoloration and, and different kinds of deposits are forming inside it. And yeah, this, thing's, this thing was never ran. I never put power to the thermostat or any heat to it to do anything. It just was an installation, and as far as I got with it, because the hose is never connected to it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't recommend this. Uh, it's unfortunate that I lost a whole month on my project because of this thermostat. At least I was able to try it out so that way you won't have to go through the same issue. So now you'll know if you are looking, if you have an M54, I think also the M52, I think uses the same uh, part number. You'll know not to use this thermostat, the SKP aluminum thermostat. If you find this online, I got mine from Rock Auto, and uh, Summit Racing sells one similar. Stay away from it. I've heard people complain about, you know, these aluminum ones because they had issues with the actual thermostat part not working. I didn't even get that far. I couldn't even get the hoses to, to fit on here. So that was my issue. So I do not recommend this. So, yeah, buyer beware. I, I took the loss so that you don't have to. So I hope, this will, now that you know, this will save you some money and frustration not having to deal with what I had to deal with. But, yes, I got my nice rain hoses, and we got the Molly thermostat. Uh, the only thing that was different with this one is this electric connector. It faced the other direction before, but now on this thermostat, I actually had to rotate the connector. It plugs in on a different angle, but it's still connected just fine. It just now said my push pin is now on this side, which is kind of hard to get to it now because it's all tight there versus it being in front where it used to be. That's the only thing that's really different about it from the uh, BMW one oh, that was on there originally. But so far, so good. This one is made in Italy as well. Okay. I think enough time has gone by. And we are still holding pressure. It didn't drop at all. Success! Oh, God, Lord. I'm so happy because this has been a nightmare all because of the thermostat and my hose is not being able to get to it. It just, it just made it rough. I tried the OEM hoses at first, and they would not connect. So then I started getting different, like the, the Continental hoses, and the upper one fit just fine, but it would leak. And then I could uh, not get anything to fit in that tight area to get on there for the lower hose, and then that thing leaked even worse. But we went back to the plastic and back to the OEM hoses, so the OEM style hoses, so. Uh, it's unfortunate I had to go back to a plastic thermostat, but I'd rather have a plastic thermostat than a non-running car because I can't put the hoses on. So, you know, little things. So let's go ahead, and all we have to do is release the pressure now. Do it slow. I don't want to jar my system here. This is plastic. Leave all that air. I can hear it bubbling up in here because it's not full of uh, fluid. Let it all out. Okay, perfect. Pressure is released. And then it just has your same connector that you would have on your air tools. Slip that off. And unscrew it. And once again, if you are just going to rent a pressure kit from your local parts store, whether you go to Advance Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any of them, they all are going to give you the exact same kit. And you want number five 
the number five adapter. So there we have it. All right, so next. So now I'm going to have to drain all the water out because even though it's in the 80 degrees during the day, sometimes it's in the mid 70s during the day right now, it has been dropping to the low 40s and low 30s sometimes at night. So I don't want to take the risk of anything freezing overnight. We've had a couple nights when it got down to 30, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but for the most part it's been staying in the 40s. But I don't want to take a risk of it hitting freezing temps and then it damaging the radiator or anything. So I'll go ahead and drain that out. I'm not going to film that. But uh, pressure test, leak test, passed, completed. We can put this behind us. All right, everyone. Thank you again so much for tuning into the video. I hope this was educational for you. Definitely was educational for me. Went through a lot of hardship on here just trying to get a lower radiator hose and a thermostat to want to be compatible with one another. But we got it done. Pressure test complete. We can move on to the next part of the project, which is the reassembly of the intake manifold and getting the car back together so we can start driving it once again. Because, yeah, my two-week project has turned into a three-month project, all because of the thermostat. <laughs> but uh, we're getting it done. Oh, I did, to be fair, I did also go on vacation. So, yeah, I don't know, whatever. But uh, we got it done. So I actually have two more videos planned um, now that we got this part done. Uh, I'll have a video. Once I get everything reassembled, I am going to make a video on how to properly bleed uh, coolant in the system. And then, of course, I'll go over the costs of all the parts. Uh, so that way you'll know what it will cost roughly. I mean, depending on your location and sales taxes and shipping costs and stuff like that, it'll be different. I'm just going to go over the cost of the parts uh, that, I, that I actually used. Uh, so you guys will have an idea of what it'll cost to do your cooling system refresh. So stay around. I will have that coming up to you guys shortly so you'll be able to budget for this uh, project. And yeah, hopefully you won't have uh, your car down for three months like I have. Hopefully you can get it done within a week or two. <laughs> All right. So best of luck to you guys. Thanks again. Hit that like button, subscribe, and check me out on Instagram at Cool Cat Terry. See you on the next one.